We're still not live. Now we're now we're live. So watch watch your mouth. I wasted all those insults. Yep, you did. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so Ed, you want to say hi to everybody in chat? Can you see chat? Oh boy, I'm not normally the best, but sure. Cricket's here, and he says hi. And so's Kate. Oh, and that's all I have. <laughs> you know what? Let me get. Let me go on uh, YouTube. Okay. So I have more than uh, just the ones that we see. There we go. Oh my gosh! Now I'm here myself. There we go. Okay, I'm gone. Well, why and Cat seem to be the two people doing most of the talking. Oh, Sky Dancer is here. Bob is here. Trash Cat is in the house. Kiwi, how are you doing, Kiwi? And I'm going up. We've got Pam. Okay. I think that's everybody right now. I think that's everybody right now. We've only got eight people in here right now, so that's probably a couple lurkers, and that's it. And so... um Tonight and Mike or Mikey, I was gonna call him Mike, but Blackie. Soul takers here. Blackie, oh hi, Steve. Blackie is going to be here. Um, I assume he's gonna be here if he can, because I was talking to him earlier, and probably Sarah. So, but they're quite often a little bit late, so we'll just kind of watch for him. And of course, you all know Bob and Ed and me. And I'll show you what I'm working on tonight is I'm working on a five by seven drawing. And all I did was just like sketch it out and it might not be exactly how everything goes, but it's kind of lightly sketched out and I'll see if I, it even shows up. But so we can hear for Bob to tell us all his weird ideas on what it might be. Well, hold it still. Um, it's a horse of some Oh, type. I know what it is. A <laughs> horse? No, an no. owl. Owl. No, it's not even an owl. What do you think it is, Ed? It's a timber wolf. It's close. That's really close. It's a coyote, actually. Uh, I was going to oh, say. Oh, darn it. It's a coyote that I saw in um, when I was driving through Yellowstone Park, and it was like winter time, and there was like a tunnel through the snow and stuff. And he was actually late, and there was quite a few people going through because it was spring, and they just opened up the park. And he was laying on the side up against the snowbank, but on the road. And he looked so sad, and what he was doing was hoping for handouts is what he was doing. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what he was doing, but he was really close. He was like right on the shoulder of the road, so, so I got a couple really good portrait-type shots of him really close up. Skipper, hey, Skipper knew what it is. He says it's a fox or a coyote. Yeah, it's a coyote. Hey, Mike. So, Hi, BK is here. Hi there. So, oh, hi. Um. Well, I, I, if you, you told, you said as soon as you said it was a coyote, I knew it had to be during the winter time because he had its winter coat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, normally when we see them, they're yeah. so thin. But that's an awesome opportunity to get a photo of a, a yeah, winter. He, yeah, he had lots of, lots of thick hair on him and stuff because it was a cold winter. But, yeah, it was, like, just at the end of winter and beginning of spring. But there was still, like, the roads were, like, you know, six-foot banks on both sides of the road from them plowing and stuff. So, so other than that, I'm going to be working on the coyote. And I'm kind of happy today because the swelling on my feet has gone down almost. I almost got shoes on this morning. But my ankles are still swelled, but my feet themselves, like the tops of my feet were swelled really bad. And that's gone down a lot and stuff. So I think it's slowly getting better. I hope. I'm tired of it. And it's supposed to snow tomorrow and the next day. So we shall see how things go with that. And Bob just, Bob and Ed both had like tornado weather the last couple of days. So, yep. So, Ed, what are you going to do today? I was thinking I would paint my, let me grab it. I 
I was too busy worrying about getting extra ice for the show so I wouldn't have to get up and I didn't get my project. Oh. But I want to paint hey, worm. my uh my pleco conduct. Oh, very cool. How are you going to paint it? Like rocks or um, like wood? Uh, well, I'm just going to give it a coat of uh, the dry lock. So I th okay. this is already dyed gray. So I think I'm just going to make it all gray. Gray, Except yeah, like roof. rocks or cement things. Yeah. Hi, Bunny Viper. I wish I would have done the whole thing. Because look, I made it. I tested out a method of trying to make it marbling that I was just kind of guessing. That actually looks totally pretty worked. cool. Yeah, I I watched. Uh, I like to watch lots of different things on YouTube, and one of the things I watch is uh, candy makers, and I enjoy watching them like pull taffy and hard candy and all that. And so I decided to try the same technique with the clay, and it totally worked. Whoa! And I wish I would have done it for the whole thing. Yeah, that's actually pretty awesome looking. Ed, have you ever been to Gatlinburg and watched them pull taffy up there? I hey, Daniel, it, and cool. happy birthday yesterday. Gatlinburg's super awesome, but I don't go anymore because it's so crowded. I know, you have to go off-season. It's Their roads can't handle the population of tourists anymore. It, it took us almost an hour to find a parking spot, Bob, yep. last time we went. It's the most visited national park in the U.S. Wow. Really? Yeah. I would have thought Yellowstone would be. Mm -mm. It's like third or fourth. Uh, it's the uh, Great Smoky Mountains, but the entrance, one of the entrances to the park is Gatlinburg. Ah. And it's a big tourist area. That's where uh, Dolly. Like Pigeon Forge is right next to it, and that's where Dolly Parton's place is, Dolly World. Yeah. Now, Pigeon Forge, it's a fun place to go to, and they they built up after Gatlinburg, so they've got lots of control on the, po the population of tourists there. I like to go up to Cades Cove, the primitive stuff and all that. It's still fun to see. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. The bears. The bars. Bunny Viper says she's pulled a lot of taffy. I bet you have, Bunny. Oh, yeah? So, said it aware, wear you out. Honey Viper is a fascinating chick. Right. Beth Kane, hello. Hey, Daniel. Hope I didn't offend her by saying a chick. Just don't call her a heifer. <laughs> won't. I don't call anybody a heifer. She'll, <laughs> I, don't, she'll, I don't like black eyes. She'll throat punch you. I bet. Oh, my gosh. I remember. It's really hard not to offend women. <laughs> I remember years ago I was I used to um, and this sounds really awful of me and I suppose it kind of was but it was entertaining I would get up in the morning and um, my daughter was about 12 at the time and I would get up and grab a cup of coffee and turn on the computer and then my daughter and I would sit there and read um, dating apps and laugh our asses off at people, guys. What they put in there? <laughs> Hi, Anthony. So I suppose in that way it was kind of awful of me. But hey, I, that, that reminded me of one of the one of the the dating dating things that I read. That was some guy. He's a motorcycle dude, and he said that he was in perfect like really good perfect shape except for a beer belly and he was looking for a young skinny chick <laughs> i was like okay he's in the beer belly <laughs> yeah he's in perfect shape except for his beer belly <laughs> oh well i told the truth <laughs> There was one guy on there too that I was laughing. I remember laughing at. He was like 65 years old. And um, he said that, um, well, he posted a bunch of pictures, a couple of himself and a bunch of his house. 
and his house underneath, you know, in the description of his house, he called it the Love Shack. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh at people like that. I know that was kind of mean of me. It was oh, kind of mean of me, but it was really entertaining. Well, the guy probably got a lot of action, too. <laughs> yeah, the Love Shack. <laughs> <laughs> I see Blackie. How long have you been back there, Blackie? Half an hour. <laughs> no, don't, li right don't listen to Bob's whining. You know how he is. <clears throat> that was all my instance. How are we all? Good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. I just broke the lead on my brown pencil, so I'm kind of pissed at, at the very moment because I've got to, like, try to start over and get it sharpened again. Sorry, I had my YouTube unmuted. How's everyone going? Wonderful, Blackie. I had G'day, a lot of fun Wally. tonight. Cat, sorry. Everyone else? Oh, Jen yeah. was here. Ed was on, uh, damn it. What's Vibes. his name? Vibes. On Vibes? Live stream tonight. Oh, cool. Yeah. Here. It, and Ed, Ed uh, made the mistake of telling me he was going on there. And I was just leaving Walmart. And I said, oh, hell yeah, low-hanging fruit. So I, I've trolled him mildly, but I was really nice. I got him to talk oh. about the midget date a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you've had a haircut, Bob. Have you? I did have a haircut. You like how she fixed it? <laughs> Looks tidy. Looks nice. I just had a haircut to Walmart. Yeah. Well, you got to get a haircut if you're going to go to Walmart. <clears throat> exactly. Proper planning pre prevents piss poor performance and all that. I've got mites in another tank now. I found. Yeah, bummer. And, well, actually, two more. So I've I've got one, two, three, four tanks under treatment now. One's had its second treatment. Tomorrow night, the big snake has its second treatment, but it'll stay in there. I'm not taking it out now that I've got everything out. And my uh, newest big ball python. He's got them, and I couldn't see them. That, that, they don't know. Apparently, they're supposed to get on a white paper towel because I thought, I wonder if he's got them and put a couple of towels in there and didn't see anything, but he was at, not acting right, and he wouldn't eat. So I picked him up. I was going to assist feed him, and I'd even tried a live mouse in there, and I thought, something's wrong with this snake. And, I mean, the mites went all over my fingers. Oh, my God. His, that, his color, you can't really tell. They're really camouflaged, the speckled look. And so I went ahead and assisted him with a large adult mouse and got that down him, and uh, it wore him out, but uh, he swallowed it. And then as soon as he swallowed it, I went ahead and sprayed him down good. But he's still in his habitat. I sprayed that stuff mildly, but I've got to take it all out of there tonight and treat the habitat. So I'm just, like I said, I've got to treat everybody, so... Makes sense. So, <clears throat> Might as well be thorough eat? and do them all anyway. Yeah. But the as I'm going... on their skin or their poop or what? Do what? What do the mites eat? Do they eat their skin or their poop or... Their blood. They're like ticks. Oh. They're like tiny ticks. Dang. That's worse. Yeah. And they bite me. I remember Blackie said they're biting you or the other night. And they bite me. They love me. Oh, my God, and they hurt, and I must be a little bit allergic to them because I swell up almost, not like a bee sting, but worse than a mosquito bite. Not being wimpy, but Jesus. Can you, how about diatonaceous earth? That's what I don't know. Thinking. That would, keep, if you put it around the tanks, it would keep them from being able to spread from tank to tank. 
like That's a thought. via the ground or carpet or whatever because bugs cannot um cross over that earth because it it acts like shards of glass to bugs and cuts them up so like if you if you have like um um any kind of thing like like any colony of different things that you don't want to get um mites in any kind of mites if you like take the tub that they're in like bugs or whatever and put it on top of a tray with that diet however you pronounce it earth mites, the mites can't get across and get in to um your colonies because they it cuts them up it wiped out my flea population when i moved here you know the people before me i think had dogs and uh my cats were just covered in fleas and it was really bad because Nico's allergic to them. And I, I pulled the carpet out, but then I, I put in hardwood floors, but it still was bad. And I took that diotenaceous earth and it's, there's probably a mound of it under every like couch chair, under every desk, everything that's like big furniture. I have it under there still today and yeah. I don't have any problems with them. And I put it in the window sills. Mm -hmm. So if they try to jump, but a flea can jump right through your wire window. Like the wire. Flat the, screen. You know, wow. Yeah, the wire screen. And you see, I, I I, live in the basement and my windows are real low to the ground. And so the cats were loving it, but they were probably just jumping right through at them. So mm -hmm. we have to keep the windows down. But uh, yeah, that diotenaceous earth really works. And yeah, I, it does. And okay. believe it or not, um, one of the houses that I rented before I got this place had, um, which took us a while to figure out because I'd never seen them before and I didn't know what we were looking at, but it had bed, bed bugs in there, like really bad. Oh, no. That was just gross. Yeah, and they are biting the hell out of my daughter. But um, I got some of that earth. And everybody says, oh, you're going to have to have an exterminator in there, which they're really expensive. But I got that diatomous earth. And um, first thing I did was I got some some sealed things to put on our mattresses so that they couldn't get in the mattresses. And then I got that earth and I put it like all around the legs of the beds to where they couldn't climb up the legs. And then underneath the stuff, you know, like underneath the dressers and stuff like that. And believe it or not, I actually got rid of them doing that. It, I actually got rid of them, and we were real careful not to let, like, our blankets sag down and touch the floor so that they could climb up the blankets onto the bed. I mean, you know, and every avenue they had to get up on the beds was surrounded by that earth, and it killed them off. I haven't yeah, seen that. Chew, Anthony. I chew. I haven't seen that in any of my research about the diatomaceous or whatever earth, but it sounds like just the thing. Yeah, and it, it won't hurt. I mean, you can go, I've got a huge bag of it on Amazon, and it's totally, um, like people, I don't know what they use it for, but they mix it in their food and stuff for some reason, some health reason. But you can get food safe uh, bags of it, and you know it's not going to hurt your animals if you do that too. You know, if it's we safe, it food, my, then it's not going to hurt your animals. We put it in my fish tanks because I put it in my soil that I cap with sand because it actually promotes gr uh, root growth. In your oh, does plant. it? it helps I never it. thought of putting it, it in fish tanks, but that I, makes sense. I, I found out. It's crazy. Somehow it makes the roots able to absorb more nutrigens and stuff. Oh, wow. So now I, I dump a cup of that in every 20-gallon tank I have. But not just in the water, but with the soil. Yeah, I, I, I take it with the soil. Uh, yeah, I take the uh, organic soil, and then I take um, some this. Uh, I take the, the iron that I have, like flat powdered iron, and I put that in there. I put diotenaceous earth in there. I put a little bit of lye in there. Um, what else was the other thing? Oh, uh, the 
uh, worm castings is the most important because the plants love it. And then you mix it all up and then you cap it. And nice. man, my plants are crazy good in those tanks. I wonder if that diatonaceous earth would uh, kill the um, um, ichthyus. Wait, lime, not lime. Did I, what did I, I think I said. Uh, you said lie. Yeah, I said lie. I meant lime. I think lie would be bad, and that might be like <laughs> that might be like acid. Yeah, lie wouldn't be really good. I mean, lime no. can be pretty bad in too much quantity. Yeah, <clears throat> so j just a little bit is what I put in. I'm just making my own fertilizer. Well, hey, Bob, I'll look it up right now to see if it's bad on reptiles. See if it'll kill uh, mites. It sure sounds like it does. Well, I know it will because I've I've like read before that if you would have like um um those little pill I bugs, whatever they totally are. Fine. You know what I'm talking about? Isopods. If you have isopods, you can like take the tray trays that they're on and put them the boxes that they're in and put them on a big tray that's that's filled with that earth covering it up and they will not you will not get mites in them i've read that before because they can't cross the line of that of the earth to get into the tubs because it kills them i guess i guess it's like like comparable to a bug like walking on a bunch of broken glass it just cuts them up i it's saw stuck a in their joints I saw a video of a girl that was popping mites out of her snake scales. She did a snake rescue, or runs one, or that rescue. But anyway, she was showing how to pop them out. And she said it takes a long time, but it gets them off of them. But I squirt them with this stuff, and they come off by the dozen. So she was just well, popping yeah. like the scales, kind of like that. And she'd go crossways in, and they pop right out. Huh. They let go. I would powder them, too. You know, put a little bit in there because it just takes a little bit and any insect. And it said mites. It's a good way to kill mites. You Google just said that. Oh, the reptile wow. mites. G'day, Holly. Kiwi Mama. Well, Ed, if I publish an article or a book about that, I'll give you a percentage of the proceeds. Well, that's awesome. Or just tell people that I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Donate mine to the art. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll have it. That's cool. <clears throat> Sarah is trying to come in, but she's having. Oh, I see her. Oh, right. Ask her how long she's been there. She just Maybe. got there because I, even though I'm drawing, I um, still saw her come in. A computer's so been a big. You hush, Bob. Oh, and Skipper too. Hey, Sarah. Skipper. And Mr. Hey, Skipper. Skipper. Oh. Are you are you are you done with your vacation or um are you still in the Bahamas? Yeah, I'm in the Bahamas right now. Oh it's no, you're nice, home. I can see. Sorry. It's a nice <laughs> room you're in there. I went to the Bahamas on a cruise like many many years ago. It was a lot of fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, it was fun. And the the boat had the best food and the oh, it was just like it was so good. Yeah. It was good food. Good booze also. Yeah. Take advantage of that. Good. That's always key. I heard that you said you weren't going to take your kids next time. <laughs> yeah, no. I'd like to go on one with just me and the wife. Yeah. Be nice. Like, we can love our kids, but most things are more enjoyable without them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I ain't no lie there. <laughs> well, what kind of stuff did they have for you to do there? What did how'd you pass the time? Oh, they uh, they had a bunch of activities. They actually had bingo. They had um, game nights. We played laser tag with the kids. Uh, like to play laser tag. Oh, it was actually pretty fun. 
What about? This would be in a laser tag league. Did really? you get Did you get oh, sick, sick at all? No, I did not get sick. Oh, good. I you got sick for a couple rock? of days when I went. I, I think I was sick for like a day and a half. Seasick, yeah. where I had to like I spent all my time on the upper deck by the swimming pool and and because I was too sick to go down below deck and then and then I got like the worst. The worst sunburn from doing that, like everybody was staring at me when I walked by because I looked like a lobster. <laughs> yeah, there it was. Uh, it wasn't real shaky. You could feel it a little bit. Uh, the seas weren't rough. Uh, it was actually pretty nice. There was no rain. Um, you were, weren't you in the Navy, Scooper? No. You weren't? No, I was in the Air Force. Who's that I'm thinking of? Never mind. I do know somebody in the fish family that was in the Navy. Was Grumpy Mike? I get seasick on like pontoons, you know, just those little, the like the floating deck next to the water, let alone going on an actual boat. Oh, I don't think God. I could do a cruise. You don't really feel it. Like, you feel it, but it's not like... Not, see, like I said, the seas were calm, so it was just, you know, yeah. like, gradual. It wasn't like stuff was moving. You know? Like... I don't know, it's hard to... Kind of like a seesaw motion, in a way. Like, gently. Not like, you know, whenever you was a kid. Holly, yes, that we, we were talking about diatonaceous earth. Sorry, Skipper. I can't do swings. You know, like playground swings. Let's see. Really? You fall off them? No, they just make me feel cool. <laughs> yeah, I. See, I love I love playground swings, but like, if you if I go to the city and I have to go on a lift, then I'm gonna get be sick for like weeks. Like really? any, yeah, yeah. and an uh, elevator or an escalator. She first. Oh, oh no. I thought she was just thinking hard about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think she means a lift. Yeah, is that an elevator or an escalator? Yeah, elevator. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Oh, you don't want me in an elevator. I make them jump. I'm trying to I get that weird feeling too, but I never tell anybody because I don't want them to think I'm a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George. Hey, Dusty. I did get some good uh, GoPro footage of under the water. Oh, awesome. Did some I snorkeling. saw that one. I, I did two shorts of it. I, I got to sit down and mess with it a little bit more because. I don't normally do stuff on the computer. I always do it on my phone. And with the amount of clips that I did get, I'm going to have to, you know, actually put something together, I think. Hey, Dibs. i got to move this because it's too big. I did some deep sea fishing before. So you really get the the rocking of the boat, you know. Oh, with those it's such a, yeah, it's such a small and I did not get sick on that. I didn't get well, we, we flew into when we went we we flew into um, Miami and spent one night at a hotel in Miami and it had like a one of those outside glass floors glass elevators that went on the outside of the building that was all glass and that did scare the shit out of me because I'm scared of heights. <laughs> yeah. I'm not scared of heights. I'm just scared of the falling part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know, I go up there, I'm fine, but you get that, you know, you get close to, too close to the edge and you feel, you feel that. Yeah, that's not a good feeling. That was interesting how that fish that you filmed, the one you posted, how it was more scared of you than the shark that was lurking back there. <laughs> yeah. It came in close and then it decided to go back to the shark. Yeah, yeah, it was scared of me. 
There was these. Uh, Maybe it was a girl fish. Could have. Been, uh, there was a uh, barracuda there too. I got a, some footage of. Oh wow! Uh, cool. Then there was these long. They almost look like half beaks. So I don't know if there is a saltwater half beak, mm. but they look like it. Uh, there was some uh, pretty cool little schooling fish. They were blue. There ain't nothing I've seen in the aquarium hobby like at a pet shop. So it's, it's just stuff that was totally different. I did see a stingray. Hi. Uh, then it was, I, th- I want to say it was a trigger fish. Because don't, don't the trigger fishes have the, their, they swim with their fins on the top and bottom? Yeah. So I got some more shorts to put out. That's awesome, man. Wait, I think, yeah. Blackie, is that right? What's that? Trigger fish. They swim with I'm, their Yeah, I'm not sure. We've got a trigger fish koi in the other room I could go and look with. I might be thinking of parrotfish. I don't really know. I'll see if I can find it. I might have to look now. All of those cokes have gone through it. He drank two big ones on the live stream he was on before this one. Where did Sarah go? I know. Uh, she froze. She's saying a fuse blue. blue. I know, maybe, huh? Maybe the power went out at her house is it the weather bad over there no it's no a really lovely day actually huh mine went out the other night from storms that never happens here but it sure did so i got a question for you have you ever like okay anytime you ever went on a vacation does it seem like something always happens back at home whenever you're not there and I'm not like talking like something happening at your house or I mean just in your neighborhood. Every time no, we leave every time no. we leave it does. We had a standoff here in town. <clears throat> oh my gosh. If <laughs> we was coming coming home, I was like, man, what the heck? You know, last time before we had a guy for some reason wanted to jump off a cliff. I don't know what he was thinking. I haven't been on a vacation. Actually, welcome back here. On a vacation in a long time. I was just thinking. Hmm, 25 years, maybe? Damn, I need a vacation. Your pets won't let you. Well, all of my sick dogs now finally passed. God rest them, but now I've got four more. Now, yeah. you're holding worm a lot. What's uh, Yazi think about worm? Well, they're buddies, but as long as I get him in here, he doesn't mind being healed. But he really, Yazi, since he's got that blind eye, likes to sleep a lot and stay in bed a lot. So, And he's not really adjusted to it. Like if a shadow goes over, he screams like something's hitting him or something like that. So, mm. How did that happen? Just old age? Just... Uh, um, it's glaucoma, yeah. Well, he's not that old, but, I mean, he's 12. He's not young. He's in here. He's over there in a chair with Princess. And speaking of worms, she's sitting right against the small of my bag. That's why I'm sitting up straight, because I can't lean back. She never gets far from me. But anyway, they have their own little social thing, you know, so she's pushing me. I'm in her way, apparently. <laughs> now you were right about the trigger fish they use their dorsal fins and their anal uh, anal fin and posterior dorsal fins as their awesome. primary mode of propulsion so that's what you got video of awesome yeah I'm wondering which one it was I uh, wonder if there's like a website that could tell you the fish around Bahamas Uh, Skipper and I are going to start 
doing something on Wednesday nights. We're going to start playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, very oh, cool. And we're going to go at, right after Bob's show at 7 o'clock. Online, you're going to uh, go? Online? Online, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, Just but there are people right over. Yeah. I don't know if anybody will ever care. <laughs> Who knows? Because we're just going to play Dungeons and Dragons and let people watch us be goofy. I'll be. I'll come. I'll be there. I'll. It's I'll pretty, watch too. Pretty popular again. It's back in vogue. Yeah, it is. I've been noticing a lot of it lately. The one thing is, we're not going to be able to like talk to the people, you know, in chat because we're going to be playing. So mm. that we're yeah, going to be rude. In character. And it's going to be on. Uh, Mr. Manifesto's channel is that did I say yep. that right? Yes, yeah, I normally mess up everyone. Jason's, Jason, yeah, yeah, he's the dungeon master. Awesome, but I just bought a Dungeons and Dragons toy. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I did. I bought a gelatinous cube. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah, and if. If we ever see one of these in a dungeon, we've got to kill it because sometimes it has really good stuff in it. A gelatinous cube Hold is on, made. Pam, can you blow it up, Pam? Yeah, hang on. I'm blind, you know, when I'm on the phone anyway. Okay. Oh, cool. A gelatinous <laughs> cube. They walk, they they kind of go bloop, bloop, bloop through the dungeon and they won't attack anybody unless you attack them. But what they do is they clean the dungeon out. So all the people that went in the dungeon and died, they just don't stink the place up. So they have these things going around cleaning it up. Ah. It, and it slowly digests everything it picks up. So sometimes there's magical items in there. Sometimes there's people in there. You never know. Oh, so the cube itself is what digests. Okay. Yeah, it's just like a giant cube of... Uh, Stomach acid. That's awesome. That Where'd you get moves that? Moves around the dungeon, cleaning. It's like the original Roombas. <laughs> <laughs> My dungeon Roomba. Yeah. <clears throat> and you got to put whatever action figure you wanted. So I put a Boromir in there. It's Sean Bean. Hmm. I just thought he would look good. That's oh, yeah. He's kind of got the flowing coat. I just actually, thought it looked good in there. Looks better from the back, actually. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this thing didn't have a price tag on it, and I bought it, and it was forty dollars. And I went, "Oh well." And you only live once. Oh yeah. Yeah, you only live once, and when you see a gelatinous cube for sale, you just gotta buy it. And that's how I roll. I I <laughs> wish I would have done that. The other time I saw a gelatinous cube for sale was one of those stupid pops, and I thought it was so cool, but I didn't buy it. And now the stupid thing's worth like $200. Oh. Mm. It's so stupid. Yeah, it sucks when that happens. Yeah. I mean, I don't ever sell anything, but just to be able to buy it, you know, after the fact, and mm. it costs a million dollars, sucks. But yeah, so really looking forward to it. Yeah, I had that with a Lego set that I could have bought for $180, and now it's cheapest price I've seen it for is $450. Yeah. Yeah. That's like... No, that's not even secondhand. That's still new. Yeah. Well, and then the thing is, is the toys you had when you were a kid. When you got older, you didn't care about them. And then when you get to looking at stuff to... They're now collector's editions. How much they yeah. were worth, and you yeah. sold it. it. Probably got sold at a yard sale. For a oh, house. I gave. I had. Um, I didn't like dolls when I was a kid, and I always got them anyway. And I had the original first Barbie doll that ever came out, and it was like brand new because I never played with it. And I had Ken and Skipper and some other ones, and I had them all in this big. A big bag thing. Uh, I was really stupid. I gave them to my daughter, my oldest daughter, to play with, and she totally destroyed them. 
I'm going to go run and grab something that I gave to my sister. Well, I don't know if I gave it to my sister, but my sister took it for her boys. And now that her youngest boy is 17, she gave it back. She gave it to my dad to give back to me. I'm going to run and get it and show you guys what it looks like now and what I'm going to do with it. But I'll be right back. I got it when I was eight. Hmm. This ought to be interesting. When Ed and I were in Atlanta the, a couple of weeks ago, we went to the toy something. I can't remember the games and stuff. And uh, he got a G.I. Joe there, and I started talking about my G.I. Joe I had when I was a kid. And I was playing with it once, and we were playing softball, baseball. And the kids in grammar school were saying, come on, it's your turn to bat. And I could bat and I could run, but that's all. I was skinny and fast. And I could hit the ball, but they were like, come on, it's your turn. And this guy said, oh, he's over there playing with that doll. And it was G.I. Joe. So I quit taking it around and carrying it and playing with it. But Mm -hmm. now I wish I had G.I. Joe. I used to love to play and dig things out and blow things up with it. You know, and he was in good shape. I mean, I took good care of him. But what the hell happened to that stuff, you know? I guess you just get tired of it and it goes away. Sure, we'd like to have some of those things now. Yeah, what is, what is that saying? Uh, when you when you become a man, you must put away childish things. It's nonsense. Yeah, it's, I don't. I I think that's wrong. <laughs> Not GI Joe though. Oh. Not GI Joe. I thought I was the coolest kid there because I had a GI Joe to play with while I was waiting to bed. You know. With that doll, bastard. You know, when you're little, when people say things like that, it matters. And then you get crusty and old, and you know they're just full of shit. I'm trying to guess what it is. I bet it's an action figure, no one had, or like a spaceship. I, um, what is it? Bobby's car. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby's car. <laughs> Wouldn't that be no. something? Didn't she have a pink Corvette or something? Oh, something like right. that, yeah. Pam, uh, Pam, did you have the pink Corvette? No, no. Well, I didn't have anything else that went with G.I. Joe. He just came with, you know, clothes and uh, I think the boots were made to him. I can't remember, but he moved. My, been, you know. my sister was all into dolls, and my older sister, and she would get like, she would make me play dolls with her, and I, I still remember sitting there thinking, "This is so stupid talking for these stupid dolls." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, that's what I was trying to guess. It was a spaceship of some kind. Oh, yeah. me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Didn't think but of what I wanted. Those to boys do. took every. Piece that was a that you could take off, oh, off. Yeah. So there's not any original parts at all, or oh. not original. You know, like even the the door that you put the batteries on. Why would you off. give that to a kid? My sister just took it, but oh. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna turn it into a planter. I think I'm gonna plant yeah, plants cool. out of it. I think that would look pretty good. Yeah, that'd be wicked. You can put it some would. in the cockpit as well. Yeah, especially like it's a either, creeping something that creeps around on it. Oh, it's wow. either that or bury it halfway under the sand and make it look like it crashed or pile rocks on it or something. Oh, that'd be cool. And then put it in a, a fish tank. But which one, Huawei? What's that? I was asking Huawei. A question. You're right. Keep going. But yeah, my Millennium Falcon is probably one of my pride and joys as a child. I don't know what now, Baby Cat wants. Ed, when you were talking about uh, you and Skipper's new stream, um, is Mr. Manifesto going to actually, since he's going to be on his channel, can he watch the chat and like do that, you know, narrate it? 
he's going to have to tell the story. See, he's going to always be telling a story. And then we have to tell him what we're going to do. And oh, then okay. he rolls dice to see if we're successful. So, so like, let's, like if he'll like be a bartender that might be giving us a job and he'll like um, tell us what the job is. And then we have to negotiate a price or where to go. Or, so I got Francis now. And oh, so it's not interactive anyway. It's it's yeah, it's all interactive with us because it's just a storytelling. Okay. So like we won't have a chance to even talk talk about anything but the story basically while we're there. Oh, that'll be cool. But we're also going to have Larry D is in the group. Awesome. Um, X Do is there. Uh, Rico's playing. Awesome. And we might have one more person. We're trying to see if his computer system will work. So we've added a six guy skipper, but I don't want to say who it is in case he can't do it. And uh, that'd be a bummer because we're afraid that uh, you you see like he gets Jason, Mr. Manifesto or Depths Unknown. He like gets like stories and it says for one to two players, three to four, five to six. Well, we're five, but there's times when Larry D won't be there. So it'll just be four people, but doing a five man, five to six man job. So it's like the monsters are increased. So we're going to try to get a sixth man and hopefully his computer will work. So that way we're able to handle fights. And it's just going to be one hour? Two hours. We're going to go Two hours. seven to nine. Okay. Awesome. But I mean, we don't expect any of the fish fam to come and you know, give up because there's a lot of great shows on Friday or Wednesday nights, you know, Well, and that's normally my family night, but we're just going to have to figure out like Mondays, I guess will have to be our game night because, uh, oh, my Tuesday is my Aquashella night. My guess that he said his guess would be Jimmy P. <laughs> well, I'd love to say for sure who, but I can't. I know. So. I don't even know who, so I can't say nothing. <laughs> Anthony Have says he's going to watch it. It's uh, right after me on Wednesday, oh, awesome. Anthony. 7 o'clock. Oh, my Eastern. gosh. Anthony, fishy friends. He's so awesome. Yeah. There, I haven't there's been a, for a while. There's been a lot of people saying that they wanted to play, and it's, it's hard to – after we brought up about doing it, more people have been like, well, we want to play. Well, you can watch this and see how well it works. And if you want to, you can be a dungeon master and try to get people recruited to play with you. And if you have any questions, I'm sure that Jason would be able to help you set it up. Yeah, you went and stuff. Yeah, I want to make sure you group works well together. Yeah. Yeah. There's two Jolly Dungeon Masters I know right now trying to find people. Is Chris uh, uh, Chris uh, Aquazone wants yeah. to put together a group, and so does the Diver Man. You got a scungy backstage, Pan? Oh, yeah, so, she is there. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I don't, I don't know if those people will be live. You know, we're trying this live thing for the first time. It's kind of more unusual to do. But uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully it's, you know, it'll work out. But we, we're we putting it on the smallest channel. I think he has like 55 members on that channel. He doesn't have very many. So, and he, he, we're putting it on that show. So that way nobody expects anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> But it's not a member only thing, is it? No. Okay. Nope. Well, I know y'all been talking about it for a couple of years, so I'm I'm glad to see it happening. Yeah, well in the six guy was somebody that I told like two years ago when we thought we were doing it. Yeah. I told him he could play and then I forgot all about him. And so uh Oh I know who we're uh I know. trying to get him in. I know. So that's how we're doing it is we're going by first come first serve. 
Right. Dude, there was a long waiting list. It's kind of crazy. That's great. It is whenever we did our first trial run, we were setting things up. <laughs> my wife, my wife comes in the room. She goes, "I can't believe you're actually playing this." <laughs> I was like, me neither. It's Ed's fault. <laughs> well, we had our first fight this Wednesday just to make sure it would work once we're live. Because we don't want to go live and then not be able to roll dice on the computer. Because we want people to see what we're doing. So we did a practice run through last Wednesday. But Skipper was on his trip. And Larry D his, had a blackout from that storm. Yeah. So there was only three of us, and we were taking on a six-man dungeon, basically. We took on three wolves that were super powerful, and we just snuck by by the skin of our teeth. So, so I've been not here for a little while. Are you guys saying that you're playing Dungeons & Dragons in, like, an online li mm -hmm. live streaming yeah. situation? Yeah, yeah. Everyone gets – that's a pretty good idea. We'll see. Well, so, so who's your dungeon master? Depths Unknown. Because I feel like that's a pretty crucial element because a really good dungeon master is going to make it really awesome. And, you know, it's it's a it's a hard role to fill. Oh, sure. Have you seen the um, Deus Ex Machina show cartoon? No, but I have wanted to. It's one of the ones that's like ticked on my list. So good. It's Dungeons and Dragons based, and the guys who are responsible for it they do a podcast, weekly podcast that's generally about four and a four and a half five hours long, where they do a campaign each week as a podcast, and they're very funny. And the cartoon show Deus Ex Machina is quite rude and filthy and good fun. Very funny. It's great. Well. I'm hoping that everybody will enjoy it so much that maybe once every couple months, maybe we'll do like a four hour or five hour campaign on the weekend or a holiday yeah. or something when everybody's off. Cause I think that'd be fun. That would be I used cool. to play, we'd all eat pizza and play all day long and have fun, you know, and it was a great time. Yeah. I used to be a DM, but that was like 20 years ago. And now it's so much more fun to just be a person. Well, that's, I don't think I could, like, take on the responsibility. Like, playing is one thing, but it is a big responsibility to be the dungeon master. Yeah, my son always used to be the dungeon master, and he was pretty good. He would come up with some really good stories. Delta Cadron. Adventures. So, so, whatever you call them. I know. I in to say so where is it streaming is it on your channel ed or it's somewhere else it's gonna be on mr manifesto and okay i don't, I don't know, know who that is in cricket well it it's a super small channel it's actually depths unknown's other channel and I uh it it's like he's done nothing really he might have a couple of songs on there and it's it's like he only has like 50 members so there's hardly any and we, we're doing it just so nobody has any expectations of this being a, a big fish show or something you know so if people just want to watch us goof off and have fun then they can come and watch us now it'd be hilarious if we would get to a thousand because i think his normal channel is about 600 or 700 if we could get this channel to a thousand before his fish channel would be awesome oh we can do that <laughs> We can do um, that. Well, I can't follow. A, I can't follow a link that's in the chat here. Can I, I have to go to YouTube to Just do that? Second, I... Love. Yeah, you'll have to go to YouTube to do it. Sounds Just like Mikey YouTube. might want to send it to, to make life. I don't know. Easier. Go ahead, run. Okay. Maybe well, I can try to send it to you on Instagram. No, I can't. I'll send it to her already. Oh. oh, cool. Okay. That makes it a lot easier because I'm terrible. You know what? With all these super mods, um, what would be cool to get a link to um, is Larry D's uh, stream um, or video this evening where he was opening the 
the uh, the stuff that we sent him. God, I can't think. Help me, Ed. Hot sauce. Yeah, the hot sauces we sent him from Bucky's. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Ed sent it to him, and he was opening those, and uh, he tried one, and he really liked it. Yeah, he's going to do another show on the other one, but he's drinking hot sauce like it's soup. Yeah, it's just crazy. filling up. He did it three times. Yeah, he usually, no matter how hot it is, he, he <coughs> I don't know, he must have scorched all of his heat-seeking heat buds out, you know? I, I, I honestly don't know how he does it. He said the heat, and he said it's got some heat to it. It's burning in the back of my tongue, the back of my throat, and uh, I'm sweating. I've got a bead of sweat, so I'd say it's a three. It goes like one out. One to ten, I guess. And I'm like, yeah. if I break out in a sweat, it's probably a real hot. He said that he liked the flavor, like a seven on it. I think he did the one that you picked up there. You had the red one, I think. It doesn't matter, but I think yeah. it's the one you picked out. I don't really remember anymore. I told him that there we were three were actually, hot ones, and we both picked one. Yeah. We left one over. Yeah. I told him we were reading the ingredients, trying to get the hot stuff, so. But yeah, he's yeah crazy. I, I got it. Does he still go by a Larry D. Buffalo photo on the YouTube? No, Buffalo photo was a different guy. Mm. Uh, That's right. This, uh, this guy, he, he, was a, he used to be just Larry D., and he changed it to Larry D's Chili Head Aquatics. Yeah, Chili Head Aquatics. Larry D, Larry D is always putting photos of his uh, quality medicinal herbs on the Instagram, isn't he? That's Larry D. Yeah. Isn't it? I don't, yeah. I don't know if he does that or not, but he does have a real active Instagram. He does a lot of the horror movies and stuff like that. The OB horror movies. He's a real cool guy. I told him that I would try some of his hot sauce if he goes to the Clash. Uh, if he does, if he would want to make a, a film, and we'd see if anybody else would do it. Which, I man, I just like when I eat salsa, I start my nose runs. <laughs> so I'm like the biggest wimp in the world. Just imagine, but, just imagine what you would do. <laughs> What what he does? I couldn't. I can't do that, man. I'll take the one of my pills that gives that has the stomach acid that makes your your stomach relax. What's that? Starts with a P. Fantastic. Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah, maybe maybe that's it. Bismol. I'll take one of those. Uh, so just looking I, at uh, that bottles making. I can't do it, man. I start shitting fire. I can't do it. That's, that's easily, easily the hottest, hottest I'm, I've ever eaten. I'm there with you, Skipper. Whenever, whenever I was way younger, I could. I can't do it anymore, man. Terry, yeah. Well, that's my thing, too. I definitely was a lot stronger in the guts when I was younger. I ate lots of really spicy things. And it's only been now I'm older that it's just a bit scary. <laughs> oh, oh, dragon breath. <laughs> like I could, I could eat it. Yeah. I'm gonna suffer later. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you, Nola. If it burns my lips and shit, I don't like that. Well, that that one that I just showed, um, the level below that in uh, is it Blake's or Blair's? Blake's. Um. The level below that used to be the number 10 hot sauce on hot ones. And that one's even hotter. But isn't that ones. isn't that one you've got one that's from Hot Wings? Because Hot Ones. Hot no, they, they used to have uh, their like me one. Mega Death Sauce, which okay. is the second second hottest one. And then that one's Ultra Death Sauce, which is the hottest but one in their range. From having watched lots of Hot Ones, it would seem that doing the bomb is the worst thing you can do and it doesn't matter how much body you get after that it's not worse than doing the bomb it's a, it's still a, a life goal to at least try uh, the bomb 
So I go and, and buy it. So do it. Did you watch the YouTube video of the guy that had celebrities on there and they was eating the hot wings? Yeah, that's the hot, hot ones. ones. The hot ones. The best, they were just saying best interview that. show on on the the YouTube's probably on all the television. He's such a great interviewer. <laughs> I'd never yes, seen it really before, is. but when Mikey showed it to me, it's quite it's quite addictive. It's really enjoyable to watch. Funny. I like and it. he has Hot all ones. sorts it's of people, bad. not just like one mm -mm. you know, like he had Eldon from the Food Network and he was amazing. How he he ate Did the wings because nothing thing? bothered him and he would say exactly what was in them. Yeah, that was a good episode. Is that the name of the channel is Hot Ones? The channel is called First We Feast. First, I know I had to subscribe to that. And we they have, the, uh, they have quite a few different food shows on there, but Hot Ones is definitely the premier show on there. A couple of the like really today. disappointing ones were some really like kind of big tough guys, and then they get really really upset. And, like. <laughs> I love. I used to love to eat hot stuff, but ever since I had my gallbladder removed, I can't. I can't eat it anymore. They had Kelsey from my football team. Uh, he's a tight end for the Chiefs. <laughs> I think he had snot coming out of his nose. Jessica all right. Fox, I, he couldn't answer a single question. He was just. <laughs> I got a kick out of Shaquille O'Neal. I laughed the whole time. Yeah, that was a good oh, one. He's a, he's a pretty funny dude. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that show a few times. That was pretty funny. Yeah, yep. Pam, will you blow me up for a minute? This is Chattanooga Milo. He wanted to be Chattanooga since Chattanooga. <laughs> He's my oldest. Oh, awesome. Milo. They just they thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna check this out because they did one with LL Cool J. That would be funny. Yeah, that was the uh, last week. That was a, a little bit annoying, actually, the LL Cool J one. Really? Yeah, because I, I just believe that a, a man of that age shouldn't necessarily dress and behave the way he does. He's oh, still, yeah, he's like still he's a 19 good. year old b boy. Oh, hey, Steph. Yeah, he's the, well. The newest one I'm looking at right now is Jen. Jenna Ortega. Yeah, that was the one I saw one. today. I she saw that today, and she could handle some heat. Nah. <laughs> wow. I reckon, from what I've seen, a lot, a lot of women unexpectedly have a lot of guts, and I don't know, like just from the ones that we've watched. And it may have been that I was introduced. I think the first one we watched was. Um, Elizabeth Olsen and so I watched it and like she just had so much composure and it made me think and like that's what I think so many of the women that I've seen have had a lot of composure some of them haven't a lot of composure but and then I've seen some of the really like tough guys who they get genuinely upset like this is this is a trick this is shit and they like walk out but yeah but lots of the ladies have just like pull it hold it together really well I haven't watched it for ages because I only ever watched it with my kid. He he's on his nineteen seasons of it. Wow, that's a lot. I heard of it. Wow, I learned about him from Rhett and Link from Good Morning, the Good Good Mythical Morning. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Good Mythical Morning, but I absolutely yeah. love that. Show. Really nice. I like that. I I have not seen that. But just the saying of good mythical morning, it pleases they did a, What is it? The double episode where that, they, both, they were both on the show at once. That was awesome. I didn't know they did. Did they do two shows or just one show together? One, one show with both of them eating wings. Okay. And normally when they do a two person one like that, they, they just do five wings, cut the list down. <clears throat> like they did the same thing with. K and Peel as well. Oh, okay. like 372 videos of it. And yeah, they do. They do like two seasons a year, I think. 
Yeah, he don't. They don't have. Uh, he don't use the same ones all the time either, does he? Uh, it changes. Um, it changes every season, but there might only be one or two that changes one or two sources. Oh, okay. He has a four pack that he sells that he makes. So those four are always mixed in it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. And then he has like six others. I think maybe it's a five pack. But... And I only learned that today because uh, that Ortega Wednesday girl, she was talking about how she bought the pack for her dad. And that's how I kind of put it together. Yeah, the ones he's doing now is season 20. Pam, what is that link you threw up there? Is that what they're talking about? No. That's for a D&D &D song. By there Stephen Lynch. I don't know if you guys have ever um, listened to Stephen Lynch before. But it's pretty funny. He's like a comedian, um, singer. But he did a D&D &D song that was pretty funny. A mismatch songs. Gosh, I'm trying to remember... Uh... There was a cartoon that did a really good song. It was like an internet cartoon. It'll come to me as soon as the show's over. I'm going to look it up on YouTube as soon as it's over, because I haven't seen it for probably, or haven't heard the song for 10, 10 years. It was awesome. Is everybody quiet right now or somebody talking? I can't hear them. I think everybody's quiet right now. I'm working on my See, drawing. Everybody... What are you working on, Sarah? Hmm. Uh -huh. I'm working on a safe chat, I think. You can't tell what it's going to look like yet. So. Let me see. <laughs> Yeah. You got blown I up. Tell. I mean, like, maybe if I bring it, I've got to work out my directions. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll what are you working on, Ed? Nothing at the moment. I'm having oh. fun talking. I painted my <laughs> thing. I do I that sometimes, too. To... <laughs> yeah, I didn't want anybody to see the glue because it was hot glue gun. <laughs> all over it you know to hold it together so i painted all the glue on it so it'd be matched the color of the walls so oh it just yeah it's like mortar and then i put it in the other room so i'll try to work on something yeah. oh how did you uh like them pictures i sent you Oh, it was awesome. There was an art show on the cruise that he was on. And he sent me a whole lot of photos of the art show. Well, that's pretty good. I don't remember if I sent him to Pam or not. Did, was it like, was everybody on the cruise invited to bring art? Or how did they get that art? So they actually, it's by Park West. And they do an auction. And they have all these different, they pick these different paintings. And, like, I mean, this book, there's so many different artists. Like, some of this, this guy, this is going to be hard to do. He has this type of stuff. And it's all, these are, like, 3D models. Like, sculpture-type art. But there was this one guy, man, he was really, I don't know, he was really good. This is his, create is his. Oh, yeah, he was the guy with the dragon. Oh, the that's cool. Dragon. Love the color. Was he also, did he also paint on glass? 
No. There was also the, the, the mirror painter that had bright colors like that, too, and I was wondering if it was the same guy. Man, I can't remember, but it, it was just a lot of good stuff. But so they had an auction. Good thing I slept through that because I'd probably get a divorce right now because I would have tried to bought quite a few of the paintings. Try to see if there's any more in the book that I recognized it was there. But yeah, there, and then there was more the next day, like after the after the the auction. Nana Lopez, he does a lot of this stuff, and it's like brass <clears throat> brass sculptures. I want to tell you, they had this the dragon the dragon one I sent you. There was a dragon that he did, and that thing had to be at least oh man, like maybe sixty pounds. I never did find out what it was. Trying to see if this one guy's name starts with a G. He's from Vegas. I think it's Garbo. Is that like I, I told him. I told Skipper. <laughs> I like uh, Sarah's and Pam stuff better. Did say that, they, did there was some nice pieces. I'm not saying there wasn't. I love bright colored stuff too, and I really liked that bright colored. Well, there was this one. Know, it's kind of like this one right here. You see the tree? It ain't focusing very well. But there was this one where it was like the, the dark style art, where it was just it was crazy. Good night, mismatched socks. All right, socks. That's all I got, Pam. But I think I took right. more pictures of. See ya. Well, I could just do this. Maybe. There you go. I never had I Oh, they were videos I sent you. Oh, yeah, you were walking around. I didn't take any of the next day. Oh, man. One. Sorry. Yeah, he had that one that had the elephant, and all the elephants that he does, every one of them has butterfly ears. There's that dragon. Wow. Yeah, and what cool. you were doing was you was picking it up and guessing the weight. And I think if you <clears> guessed <throat> it right, you won it. Wow. It's been a crazy night. Really? Again?
G'day, AJZ. Hello. Hello. This dog, like, loves it when I come on stream because she's never allowed to, like, jump up on me, but only on the stream I let her, and she knows when I'm sitting here on the stream. I'm on the computer. She doesn't come and do it, but it, as soon as it's, like, a stream and I guess you can hear me talking to the computer and the computer making the sounds, and that's it. She's up. She wants to come and have all the time. So, Ed, I have something um, for you, but I haven't quite, I might not have it finished because I stopped working on it when you said you want to, I'm going to send it to you, but... I need, I'm going to finish it, but I need to know something from you first. So this is from a long time ago. Oh, the awesome Cthulhu. Oh, well, I know it's not Cthulhu, but it looks like a Cthulhu. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Close enough. It is amazing. Sorry. Because it, it's, so I put it away. Like I just put it away going, that for Ed, like whenever it was years ago. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but what I need to know is if I send it just like this, are you going to be, like, happy or should I try and paint it in colours or you just want it in black and white? It's scary. I, it's always scary. Ed was I'll just saying it. he does like your colourful stuff. Yeah. Well, I do love colorful stuff. Like I've got that one colored one that you have or that you did um, that just super, you know, it's like, a, uh, gosh, it looks like watercolors. Mm -hmm. But I also, I absolutely love your drawing or, you know, your black and whites too. I should just send so, it just like this. Oh, that would be amazing. I would love that to death. And I will definitely hang it up with all your other stuff. It's been, it's been hanging out here with your name on it for like a really long time At, oh and not gosh. just here. Like it's been moving and every time I'm like, no, no, like it goes out of the pot. That's Ed's one. So it's had it's had your oh. name on it quite sincerely for a long time. Oh, my um, gosh. That's nice. But that, that's been yeah. kind of my, my question. I've been looking at it and like not being able to decide. So I thought, well, since it's got your name on it, you have to decide if it just stays as it is or if it gets colour on it. Well, if I'm mean, happy I, as it is, then I will send it as is. But I, I love that it. Me of something else. I'm glad. I, I, <laughs> I absolutely love it. So I think uh, I was hope. I think I was hoping to to bid on it way back when you guys were trying to go to the. The, yeah, the one place. So there was like the whole thing, and you were going to, and then it kept on being something. I was like, oh, I can't put that up for people to bid on because that's Ed's. Like you weren't there. There was like something oh. went on, and I had it aside for you. But after all of the time, it's like it's just yours because it's just had it. It knows it's yours. I know it's yours. Oh, well, thank we you. We so all know it's all. yours. <laughs> That is so awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, I love I can, it. Off, often on this stream, I'm like, oh, that, but then I have to drag it out of the box. So I keep going, oh, I should drag it out and talk to Ed about that, but I never do, but I did today. But can I sort of sidetrack now onto something else? Pam, did, you, did Bob send you the thing from me yet? No. <laughs> you should know better than that. <laughs> it's, it's the only leverage I have to get my stuff from November forward, 2021. Okay. You're on mute, Pam. 
all of my stuff she's given me, all of my stuff I bought, all of that stuff since November 2021. I'm holding it hostage. Is she talking to us or is she talking on the phone? Yeah, I know. She's probably cussing me. She's muted and I don't think she knows she's muted. She just figured it I out. Oh my God. I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> No, I was saying I've got stuff ready to go. It's just I can't. Um, I haven't been able to get to the post office because my damn feet have been swelled up so bad that I can't get shoes on. But they're better today, so I'm hoping, hoping, hoping I can get there. I don't know what's wrong with me, but something's wrong with me. But we'll we don't talk about that. I have Whatever. a. I have a. Um, haven't even looked at it. Do you want me to open it, Sarah? Um, no, I'm happy for it to be whatever. It's just that obviously I'm excited for her to receive it. But at the same time, I would not rouse on you because I asked you to send it on as a favor to me. So I can't get mad about anything. Oh. So I'll, I'll be happy to, to wait unless unless she wants to see it now but if she's happy to wait then i'm happy no, to I'll wait oh wait. Wait. it's going to be pretty soon as soon as i can get shoes on on my stupid ankles and feet it's hell to get old you know that right do that thing you know to put jeans on and i say this as someone who doesn't wear pants anymore but i remember putting on tight jeans you used to like have if you lay on the bed you can yeah. get your tight jeans nicely right so you kind of need to do that but with like your feet up in the air you need to sit with your feet up in the air for a little well, while they're, they're better today they my ankles are still like huge but my feet have been swollen so much that the, even the tops of my feet have been swelled up with mm. and they look like sausages with little pig toes sticking out and, and the I don't, tops of my I feet have swollen way first. down today so so hopefully it's gonna go away it's been that way like Every morning I get up and look at my feet and say, please don't be swelled up. And every morning they're swelled up. So I don't know what the hell's wrong with me, but. She but go to the doctor. <sighs> yeah, I know. That's why I, don't, that's why I don't talk about it because everybody starts chewing me out for not going to the doctor. I'm not chewing you out. Just anybody that can't walk and get out of their house should go to the doctor. The doctor costs money. And plus, well, so. My mom's friend, she had cancer. She's still, she's still going strong, actually. But she was like, actually, fuck the doctor, because as soon as you go there, they shake the, you know, stick at you, and that's it. You know, they start coming up with all the things that are wrong with you and all the things you've got to do. And, yeah, that's true, too. You know, she just, she was like, I'm just over them. I don't want to go there. You know, pay the money to tell me all the things that are wrong, or I'm just trying to live. So, what's wrong is is I'm fucking sixty eight years old. That's what's wrong. Not till June. <laughs> well, yeah, but I can't wait till your ass turns seventy. Oh no, <laughs> I don't. I can wait for that. I'm already older than dirt. Come on, worm. Worm's back. I'm a jet way older than that. That's the time. I'm going to check that it's healthy. When you want to add teeth, if you cook the teeth before you, or cook the teeth, then put them into your mold. It makes it so much better because you can make them look real sharp and nasty. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, like, I'm just, like, making indentions for the thing's teeth to go in. Let me see so again. It'll be cool. Well, I'm just kind of just going. <clears throat> but I'm just working cool. on it. It's just going to be a... I don't know what I'm doing. But the teeth are, I'm going to have great big, like, tusks in its mouth where the dents are. Okay. So are you, are you ma making the teeth out of a different material? No, nope. I'm just making it from 
the sculpty, but if you try to get it really sharp point in there, it's always going to bend and stuff in the because it won't be just flat because it gets real soft mm -hmm. in the oven. Yeah. So if you make it and then drop it sideways, you know, flat, it doesn't bend or anything. And then you stick it in and you have really sharp, cool looking teeth. At that. And everybody wants sharp teeth. Good day. I chipped it too. It's nice and sharp now. <laughs> right on the front. And your tongue never misses it when you've got a sharp spot on your tooth. I, I'm not sure how I did it because I actually did it before I tried to bite something or open something or and the dentist put a thing on it, but I broke that off now. I think I'll just leave it. I mean, it's always horrible when it's fresh, but they smooth out pretty quickly. I have, uh, from I probably shouldn't even say this, but I have like stuck a file in my mouth before and filed off sharp edges. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's cutting my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I have not done that, but my kid had a loose tooth and he got in his mouth with a butter knife to pry it loose and Fairly enough, afterwards he said it might not be such a good idea to pry teeth out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, mean, I, I had a loose tooth once and I used the end of a hairbrush oh and then popped it out with a brush. And I was thinking, that was really dumb. Why did I get the biggest, bluntest thing possible? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Aquas Gardens Inn. Better see who's over here. And I put this on and nobody commented, and now people coming in are like, what the hell is Bob doing? Rick. Yeah. Well, wait, so well 40th anniversary of your 28th birthday. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Michael, Skipper, you... what was the food like? Was there uh, buffets? Yeah. And then they, the, with the buffets, they did a, a theme. Uh, one night was... Oh man, what was it? It was French, French food. The other night was an Italian theme. So what they did, they always had sections of, you know, I guess you say normal food or whatnot. But then they had this section where it was a theme of the type of food that was there from a different country or something. Yeah, was it was any of that food good. good? Oh, yeah, it was really good. Did they have Australian as a theme? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is Australian food? I mean, what would be an example? <sighs> Kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are lots of good kind of wish <clears throat> foods. But um, I wouldn't that? say that there's enough to be a, like, cuisine that you could make a buffet. I mean, you could, but... Hey, amateur aquatic. What's that gross <laughs> stuff that blank. you guys put on sandwiches? Vegemite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could have Vegemite dinners. That does not go on a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> There's some Vegemite sandwiches at a smorgasbord. <laughs> Vegemite sandwiches and meat I pie. I genuinely really love Vegemite. Like, I do. The way, but there, there is only a couple of ways that I like it. But I like it, you know, well cooked toast and butter, and just like really sparingly on there, and it's it's beautiful. But I, 
I knew somebody who used to mar use it as like a meat marinade, and that was not nice. That was not what you should do with the Vegemite. <laughs> I've used it in gravy making before, but yeah, only a couple of times. I didn't think it was worth no, adding no, it's to a great. gravy. No. So, yeah, she used to, like, smear it on the meat and then leave it to sit for a little while and then cook the meat. And it's just not nice. Like, that was fine meat. You could have just cooked that meat with nothing on it and would have been nice. No, you could put the meat on it. Now that you've said that, though, I kind of want to try it. It's not nice. Like, go ahead, try it. It's not nice. Might be good on kangaroo. However... Because um, I was reading, oh, it's like way back there, uh, but maybe not. I was going to like show off my knives since that's apparently an Australian thing to do. But <laughs> like I genuinely have some knives. I'll show you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shall we like compare knives? Oh, that's my, knife? my Swiss Army knife. Oh. I could go grab some knives. <laughs> oh, my God. Good one. Oh, my my favourite kitchen knife is a Victorinox, the same brand as Swiss Army knife. Oh, nice. Um, and all my steak knives are Victorinox. I don't know. I have a favourite kitchen knife, but it, I don't know what it is. Do you know what I really freaking want? And I keep getting Instagram ads for it, and it's called a chef's axe. And I see those ads and I get, like, the little drool. Mm, yeah, they look pretty choice. Suddenly, I really need to chop everything in my kitchen with an axe. <laughs> Kipper, what are you making tonight? Vegemite what? and lettuce sandwich, Kiwi Mamo. That's a new one. I've done Vegemite and onion sandwiches. They're pretty to pretty tasty. So I, I used to like if you do that like thing with the toast, but you then you just put some slices of tomato on it. It's really good. Vegemite and tomato on toast. It's nice. It's a lovely accompaniment for many things. That's not a yeah. Mikey, do you guys like buffalo wings? Uh, yes. I have those for dinner tonight. Uh, You're having those for dinner. Usually you don't have like regional foods there in Australia, like we have southern food. Um, Not really, because the, the basis of this country is pretty much always been multiculturalism. We've always had, you know, since Whitey's been coming into the country, we've had Whitey coming in from all around the world and yeah. other other varieties of humans as well. So sort of Australian cuisine would be just a conglomerate of all other nations and cuisines from around the world. Yeah, that's cool. Vegemite and lettuce. You probably have more Asian food than we do. Like actually, our Asian food is like how Americans pretend like Asian food right. would taste. Yeah. yeah, we still get a lot of that as well. But yeah, it's becoming... Uh, certainly becoming a lot more popular to have uh, true to traditional Asian foods restaurants. Wait, you guys are so much closer to the... And well, we had, we had loads of Asian immigrants as well back in the day, making railroads and all the same sort of stuff you had them for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? I thought it was eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Aqua balls. is cooking tonight. Three different foods. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't think that's surprising for George. Isn't nope. he always busy making a bunch of different stuff? Yeah, he's always busy making wonderful stuff. George's barbecues. Yep. So what are you making, George? That's like the most popular pastime that there is in L.A. is making barbecue, barbecuing. George asked me to make a Five Nights to Freddy's 
for his one of his kids. And I had forgotten all about it. And I just remembered yesterday, I was at Walmart, and they had Five Nights at Freddy toy action figures. And I'm like, man, I just buy him an action figure. <laughs> he better. But those things are pretty creepy. Whatever they are, they're like, they're like nightmare bears or something. Yeah. Never heard of them. You guys have heard of Five Nights to Freddy? No, I'm going to Google it. It was a game or something. I remember one of my kids used to play it. And it was kind of creepy. Stuffed bell pepper, tomatoes, and Mexican squash. First dish. Second dish on the barbecue since 3 o'clock this afternoon. Smoked pulled pork. Third dishes, the stuffing from the Mexican squash with eggs. Oh my God. Save me a plate. Hey, BJ. An amateur aquatics asks you if it's warmed up, Pam. Pam. What? Amateur Aquatics ask if it's warmed up a bit. Here? No, it's getting cold. We're going to get um, snow this after, or tomorrow. And it's Good been day, like, day. it's warmer, somewhat warmer. Like right now, it's 24 degrees at almost 11 o'clock. So it's not like my, in the minuses, but it's not really warm yet either. I think all the, all the highs for the next week are in the 20s and 30s. Wow. And a lot of lows in the single digits. But tomorrow yep. tomorrow and the next day we're supposed to get snow. And then I think again on Thursday we're supposed to get more snow. What's freezing? 32 Fahrenheit, isn't it? Yep. Um, Aquabow said he'll love it, dude. Okay. He got, he, got, he got in bobbleheads Friday, not Freddy, and he loved that. I'll look it up. I'm going to go throw this in the oven, and maybe if we're still on in 15 minutes, I will uh, glue it together, or pull it out. At least. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be on for another probably half an hour before I shut it down. Okay. So when I get back, it'll be 15 when I get back. Okay. Halloween. Halloween hermit crabs. Nice. I've seen those. They're cool. Are they brackish or fresh? I can't remember. Probably fresh. Well, I'm going to put the coyote off to the side for a little bit and watch the chat. I haven't been watching chat at all. I didn't even say hi to BJ. Yeah, you can. Blackie, I'm deciding that I'm going to put all of these loose, just sitting around on the table tanks on rack, and it's either going to be metal or plastic so that I don't have any wood to deal with. And I'm going to say that again. I'm going Which to take tank? all these uh, uh, snake reptile tanks. And I'm going to group them by, like, if they're snakes or if they're lizards or chameleons or whatever also. Because yeah. no one else has mites, just the four snakes so far. Oh, yeah. uh, no other species. But, yeah, I need to get them organized and where I can watch them closer. And they won't be touching, that kind of thing. Yeah, sensible. Jessica stops. Yeah. 
Jessica Sox was in. I think she left to go to bed, but she was here. I called her Steph for some reason. Oh, well. Well, hey, I'm going to talk to you guys later. It was nice. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Skipper, when are are you all starting your stream? Oh, uh, yeah. Is it this coming week? The D&D? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it should be. Yeah, right, Ed? This Wednesday coming up? This Wednesday coming up. Okay, I got to, like, earmark that in my mind so I can watch it. We'll need to be sharing the link to it before. Yeah. We can share the link in your stream, Bob. And say that they're coming up right after you're done. Are you going to have a show at five o'clock tomorrow? At six, I I should. I don't know yet. Let's see. And we can also talk about it on Tennessee Fish Mafia. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on yet. More. I should be around. Should be. You know how that goes. But, all right, see you all. Good night. Say amen. Good night. I'm going to make a whole bunch of tentacles, I think, that this thing's going to ride on. I might give it a crab claw or two, too. I don't know. It needs some type of a something. I just think it's wild enough that you kids that can make things out of clay can make things out of clay. Yeah. I made some stuff when I was in high school, but I don't think I've made anything out of clay sounds. I should get some clay and make some stuff. It'd be kind of fun. Good. It's very fun. I am... Um... Yeah, I haven't pulled mine out yet, but it's partly because I have someone coming for like inspection in my house. So I like put all my craft boxes in a big wall with a bit of fabric hanging over them so that they look neat. Organized. Yeah, which it, you know, it's sad because I want to pull all the things out of them. And that's why I need a different kind of space where I can just, I just need to be able to pull all my crafty creative stuff out i need to have it out everywhere all over the place all the time and then just be able to make whatever from it um it takes so much time to pull stuff out and put it all back the way what oh my gosh i need to reorganize this room so bad because this is my craft room but I've got stuff all over the place and it needs to go in its drawers or on the shelves. <laughs> uh-huh. But I I bought more of the artificial bricks to finish bricking this room. See how it's, it used to be some of these like sewing room or quilting room. So I've got this horrible quilting or, you know, wallpaper, <laughs> but I really love this fake brick. That's quite good. I mean, like, if, if I trip and hit my head, it's actually soft. So <laughs> it doesn't even hurt your head. You should have had that for when you're in college, you know? <laughs> or back in the heavy drinking days. Right. Okay, show and tell. I'm working on a coyote, but I haven't gotten very far on it because I'm kind of, like, figuring out how I want to do the colors and stuff, but I'll show you real quick. Oh, that looks good. Oh, man. Uh, Cute. You always perform magic, Pam. Your eyes are always wicked. Wicked good. Well, the eyes are very important to show personality and stuff. So if the eye, I always do the eyes kind of first because if the eyes don't turn out, then I'm going to start over again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
that's just the way it is. <laughs> the eyes aren't right, the drawings are not getting done. And you think I'm joking, but I'm not. I seriously, if the eyes aren't right, I'll throw it over and start over again. It shows. It shows that you're an eye perfectionist. So, and then we got Ed who was doing a cave thing, but he put that somewhere else, and then he's got something else that's in the oven right now. I'm making its legs right now. Oh, cool. So. I've made so far, let's see, seven of their legs. I think I'm going to go to about 10 or 11. And it's just going to be a massive amount of how many How many legs it. does Cthulhu have? He just has two. I, here, I made a Cthulhu about six years ago or seven years ago. I can grab it. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys. Hey guys. But these tentacles yeah, I, I made from clay and then the other oh, stuff I like put together from a model. But it's actually the creature from the Black Lagoon, but then I made him look more like Cthulhu because yeah. I added these. Yep, and he's pretty cool looking too. We can. I like that a lot. Hi, Vibes. But you see, he just has two legs. Nice. But, nice. Yeah, I... I did him a long time ago, but I really like him. Me too. I like that. And then, are you working on anything, Blackie? Uh, yeah, I've continued my drawing from last week, but it seems I've forgotten how to do anything this week. Cool. I've been struggling making lines and stuff. Yeah, but that new stuff seems so much surer than the previous stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you can't see it up close. <laughs> no, I don't want to show it. Up. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Yeah, I'm I, don't, seeing... I, I don't agree. I think there's a great clarity to that new stuff. And, like, yeah. sure, I get that maybe there's a not the same continuity between the, the one before and the one today, but I think the one today is really powerful it's I like confident. it looks confident and strong yeah i'll take that thank you oh me no yes. i have nonsense to somebody show asked for it um triple a asked for a show and tell of everybody what everybody's working on so yeah but well i only have nonsense because i have the shirt which i just sorry it's hard because i put this plastic thing in it so i can lean on it um, and it's not really much more than I think whatever I showed you before because instead, well, I started drawing on this one. Nice. Uh, Very so, cool. But I also was pulling out, I wanted to ask, so this is not what I did today. And, I mean, I know people, people can be kind and that's difficult but i'm interested in if like these drawings when i was pulling out ads i found these ones that i have and like oh I've, i like those guys you like uh, those guys. they got a lot of they got a lot of personality oh if you sell those i put dibs on the one that's on four legs oh, the one that fell this guy yeah yep. <laughs> dibs dibs they're all cool i love them because like I, I, I did them and then I didn't keep doing them because you know I just wasn't sure if people would like them. So I'm really interested to sort of actually okay. show them and see. We this should. one here yeah, I've got but he's on the back of like a print that I also then paint on. That's like a print a, a lino print. And then I'm drawing him on the other side. They should have names. Those ones should have names. Yeah. Each one of them should have a name. Are you thinking t-shirts for those or? Well, I don't know. I guess I could technically put anything on a t-shirt if I can. I have a bit of a problem at the moment in management of like time. My time management sucks since like after everything that happened with all COVID and stuff, everything kind of changed and I've ended up in a position where I've had to go to work and I'm finding it really hard to like balance that with getting my creative stuff happening. I don't know. 
there's just not enough time in the day to i can totally relate to that clean, clean the house cook the food do the shopping look after the kids go to work and do my creative stuff and so like i know when i was having the time to put into it it was i was having success with it but not having the time to put into it at the moment it's just like it's like i feel like i'm like splattering or staggering at it all you know um but i wasn't really putting stuff up when everything happened with COVID and like, i don't know i feel like i've harped on enough about i had like something set up to go like an exhibition that like fell down and yeah my car engine blew up and used up all my savings money and everything just like so making t-shirts like maybe and if someone wants a t-shirt i could probably probably find enough time to put like something on a t-shirt but i have a hundred t-shirts i want to put up and just i just i get overwhelmed with how much stuff i want to be able to achieve and i can't I've got like an hour here and an hour there, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Bob just sits and looks stunning. <laughs> Do what? Look, I made a hand with an eyeball in it. it Bob just mm -hmm. sits and looks stunning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That is that's cool. cool. That's certainly it's certainly a. I need to paint. Cat's comment was a cleaner version than what I was going to say. I can get really obsessed, Ed, with doing with the clay, like rolling out like tiny little balls and putting the holes in them. And, like, they can work oh. for suckers, they can work for other things, but just the practice of making those little balls with the holes in them can be sort of addictive. Yes. Do you enjoy that as well? Well, Sarah, no pressure at all, you know that, but... When, when you do whatever you're going to do with that one, just keep me in mind, please. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to, um, you know, if you want him, he's yours. Well, we know when you're finished with what you, if you're going to do something with him. Well, what I need to do is, I just wanted to decide whether they were appealing you know, oh, they're I'm, definitely appealing. I love them. I love I was them. Making them. But I just wasn't sure if they were. I was like, I like them. Maybe I'll just I keep making them for me. But. Yeah. He would even be a great option piece, maybe. I don't know. Well, on that note, I would love to do something I, in terms of an auction. I just, <coughs> I always get like, I feel guilty and weird about it. And so I don't do it. It's because you're an artist and you use the wrong side of your brain. Yeah. You don't use your business side. All <laughs> artists do it. We all want to give away our stuff, but we don't want yeah. to sell it. So it's important yeah. to have somebody else sell it for you. Yeah. And then. You well, that's what live. his role for me. That's what he's meant to do. He's meant to be the one who pushes and sells stuff. That's why he was so helpful to have when we go to the market and stuff. I would just freak out about where am I putting things on the table and whatnot, and he could happily you're, sell. You're, you're 15 me. minutes in the oven is up, Ed. Cool. Thank you. I'm going to throw these tentacles in and see what happens. I mean, I may not get them in by the end of the show, but I'll have them done but hey, you just around round end because i was doing some but i will like put the wire in and then have a little wire hook coming out the other end so i could attach it into but i guess i was attaching like those kind of things into maybe like a soft toy like a something like that so he, he's gone anyway so hey vibes yeah, it was time for him to go get his thing out of the oven. Who's that? Oh. 
We're like a whole pile of cactus in here. Oh, I want to see that. Hang on. Let me blow you up. <laughs> I can't see it very well when you aren't blown up. <laughs> oh, I love the colors in that. Very nice. Um, very cool. This one has some really cool little pen detail in it as well. Um, yeah, that's really awesome. Which I really like. I just kind of got like a whole pile of stuff here. But yeah. Huawei's got that Google mind reading technology, AAA. Very cool. It's lovely. Yep, I like that one a lot. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So much stuff here. Good night, Daniel. Oh, good night, Daniel. See you, Dan. I've started learning this song yesterday because I wanted to learn it and now I cannot get it out of my head. And I'm not kidding, like all day. And just then I like notice I'm humming it to myself. Like a Japanese alphabet song. Well, now you've said that, you know you're going to have to sing it for everybody. Yep. <laughs> really? Of course you are. Yeah, but you I will do it. You can't go making statements like that and then not coming following through with it. So that then maybe everyone can have it in their heads all day. Let's yeah, see what you got, Ed. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, well, he's just cooked. So I'm going to run a whole bunch of tentacles down his head. And I've made a whole bunch of these, like, little curly Q tentacles. And they're going to go all the way down his head. Like, all those holes are going to have one. Yeah. Inch. Nice. And then all those legs are going to come out the bottom and then i'm going to have him have one long arm with that eating thumb or eyeball thing cool or just so, really get a good view on it i don't know what he is what it is but so because you've got all the hole and you've got your tentacles is the hole just going to be like say for your ad adhesive is going to go around your tentacle and into the hole okay yeah it's just uh, so the glue doesn't go all over the, the it's so hot, <laughs> uh, all over the place. Sure. The holes just kind of hold it. Hey, the holes hold it. And then I can always touch everything up with a, a, um, a Dremel. This stuff is great mm -hmm. with a Dremel. I love Dremel. I love Dremel so much. Like, like me too. With my actual heart. Pam, if you want, I'll show my new snake for a minute. Yes. The first time he's been out since I got him yesterday. Oh, that's not him. Hold on. Oh. I'm going to be right back. i got to wash my hands. What kind of snake have you got, Bob? It's another corn snake, but it's an ultra... Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that. You made a video of him. Yeah, he's an ultra amel anesthetic. So oh. that's, that's some really cool genes. 
was thinking he was coming this way. That's him, the way back there. Looks like he's hunting for something. Yeah. Eat. Load this up. There we go. There we go. So he looks, ooh, he ends up looking pink. And what's really amazing is they had him at Petco on sale. He found one of the tunnels that they, they've got all kinds of burrows and stuff. He found one evidently. There he goes. But we'll be able to see him as he goes down. Very cool. He's about a foot long, maybe 10 inches a foot. And when I fed the group of them last night after I released him, he did eat. There he goes. Pretty cool. Thank you. On the fish channel. <laughs> it's an art channel today. Right, exactly. He's pretty. He is artistic. I think based on popular demand from the chat, we need to hear Sarah's Japanese alphabet song. Yes. <laughs> You're all going to regret that. Look at the chat. It's just full of people begging for yes. you to sing it. Yes. Nico would like to hear something from his own country. Respect country. I don't know. I I can try. It's very short. It's very short, and like it won't be wonderful. But like I can do it for you. I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Nine nine times out of ten, when Sarah says something isn't going to be wonderful, it is wonderful. It is. Yeah, but like you know already that I can do four things of me just trying to sing it over and over. It's not wonderful. But. Now I'm going to try and sing I'm going to like really fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's been in my head, I'm not kidding, all day, just absolutely all day, I should have listened to some other music or something to get it out of my head. But it's just like an alphabet. But it's like, um, <sighs> I hate this. Um, uh, e U e o ka ki ku ke ka sa shi su sa se so ta chi tu te to na ni nu no ha i ku he ho ma mi mu me mo ya yu yo ra li ru re ro wa po to ten to ma ru de Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It was awesome. What I like, and I don't really know, but like the last little bit where it says, that, that just means like, because in the alphabet they have, you've got like your, your sets of like letters. So say like, I can't remember what they are, but say like T. So your T ones will be like, Tachitsu Teto. But then if you put like a little thing on them, they become like D instead of T. So that's how, and so that little line at the end is like, that's your alphabet, but then it's saying, oh, and all the other bits that it has, which I find really cute. Yeah. I, think it, I think it literally means something like also dots and circles or something like that. Huh. Well, just to clarify, their alphabet is not our alphabet in Chinese, right? No, their alphabet is like, it's just like the sounds that their words are made up out of. Gotcha. Wow. So I know my name in Japanese. Well, they have like vowels, but then all their other ones are like a, a consonant and a vowel. 
So like we have vowels and then we have just consonants and a whole range of consonants. They've right. got vowels and then they've got a consonant vowel combinations. That's oh my like gosh. <clears throat> it actually makes things a lot easier than our language, to be honest. My name's Ed Kwanda. Okay. I learned that when I was in <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> Kwanda. Ed Kwan Da. Da. It sounds like a Jedi name. That's a pretty good name. That's easier to say than your English name. Well, that's Edward in Japanese is Ed Kwan Da. Oh, I was thinking that was your last name you were saying. No, he couldn't figure out my last name in Japanese. I imagine. <laughs> He said, I'm sorry, Edward, but the only thing I can do is your first name. Yeah. He, like, gave every kid in the classroom their name, Japanese name, first and last. Except for me. Which is cool because sumo wrestlers don't have a last name either. Awesome. If they're not Japanese, they only have one name. I don't have a middle name. But my name in Japanese is annoyingly the same as my name in English. <laughs> Sarah? Well, Sasa. Yeah. I did learn some Japanese and I was really, <clears throat> I was really good at it. Um, but I didn't keep learning, so I forgot lots of stuff and I didn't keep growing from there. But I really enjoy the language and because I like the culture. Um, Oh my that God, was, was that fun. a Japanese alphabet, did you say? Yeah. And I called it Chinese. Oh my God. <laughs> so you know what's really Bob. funny? Bob, they don't even, in China, they don't speak Chinese. They call it Mandanese. Mandarin. Mandarin. Or Mandarin. Yeah. But well, there's Cantonese and Mandarin. They don't just have one. Chinese language. There are two Chinese languages. Well, I didn't mean to insult anything or anybody. I just forgot what you said. The only I'm Chinese I know is I can say shark and fish, right? So fish, <laughs> you, and shark is sha, you. Wow. That's, that's my Chinese lesson for you. Do you know cat in Japanese? Back? No. In Japanese, is Nico. Mm. Oh, yeah. uh, That's yeah, why no, I named my cat. cat in Japanese, Nico. Yeah, but it's not Nico. It's Neko. Well, <laughs> but get, it's my American accent. It's my Southern accent. <laughs> right. I used to have um, well, because I like they have those um. The Maneki Neko, they're like good luck cats with their little paws. Yeah. And I used to have a set of those that my stepdad bought me, but I don't know what happened to them because I don't have them anymore. Is that the one with the waving arm? Well, you get the ones with the waving, but mine were just like still waving. But they were a set. But they're Maneki Neko. Well, I think it's probably about time to end the stream for a night, you guys. No. Oh, I want to see Ed. It always comes pretty soon. Very cool, very cool. Oh, yeah, that's that so cool. cool. I still have three he's more to do personality. Room. But he's going to be a lot of fun to paint. Yeah. Nice. Ed's very nice. Very nice, yeah. Thank you. Yep. So, anyway, I guess I shall say good night, everybody, and thank you for coming up, Ed and Bob and Sarah and Blackie. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks. And I'm probably going to do a stream tomorrow night, unless it's something that happens, but I think uh, last week I did a Sunday night stream and 
Actually, you had quite a few people show up, so I'm going to try it again this week. Yeah, you Tonight. had more people, I think, Sunday. Yeah, I had more people Sunday than on Saturday. So I can maybe come. That would be great. I'm going to do. I'm going to do like a little auction tomorrow night. If you wanted to throw in a couple pieces, if you can make it, that would be fantastic. And uh, that would be wonderful. But I also don't want to take it. Like I really appreciate that, but I also don't want to like take away from you by auctioning my stuff on your stream. I don't mind a bit. You should have that. I, I will be know that. free and like I said, I'm chucking a sticky because I have an inspection. I have an inspection at my house. So I have to be here for that. Well, Blackie okay. is her agent. I will be sending you guys a link. I'll send everybody a link. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to try it again because last week's Sunday night stream went really well. We had a lot of people and had a lot of fun. So yeah. Can I, so can I just ask? If um, Americans know what Chuck and a sickie is, oh yeah, I don't. No, nope. the same oh, really? as cracking your fat. Oh, it's not the same as cracking a fat. Oh, <laughs> did he did he say cracking a fat? <laughs> Luckily, no Americans know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm so embarrassed. Really. So chucking a sick is not the same as cracking a fat. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I might have to chuck a sickie if I crack too many fats. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know about that either. But just to be clear, chucking a sickie means calling up work and saying, I'm really sick, I can't come to work. I'm sorry I'm too sick to be at work. It's like saying you're Honestly. sick, but you're not really sick. Yeah. So you're chucking it. You're chucking a sticky. We're playing hooky here. Yeah, playing That's hooky. Right. You're playing hooky from work. I'm pretty sure hooky's usually from school. Yeah? Oh, we used to... Um, and my blood wag. What else? That was another one I can't think of. Good day, Sterling. Yeah, there's a few different names for it. <laughs> but let's do it all again tomorrow, shall we? Yep, yep. We shall do this again tomorrow night. So good night, everybody. Good and night. Good night. Nights. Good night. Hooroo, everyone. <laughs>